when we start adding some interactivity to this game, one of the things that we're going to want to be able to do is open a door so that our robot can kind of escape this room. And we can't do that until we have a door. So that's what this step's going to cover. So let's have a look at importing that mesh then. So we're going to right click and import to game meshes. And there are a couple of meshes we need to import for the step. We're going to have door frame and then I'm going to hold control and click on trim wall. And we're going to use that to fill any gaps that we can't otherwise fill. So click on open. Now, this one we've got to be careful about. So the door frame here, we have to change some settings because of the way that collisions work. So this time we're not going to have it generate missing collisions on this one because I've created a collision mesh for this one. And because it, we've got a hole in the middle, if we had a collision that went around the whole thing, we'd get stuck on the door. And there's a very specific collision that we need for this. And that means we've got to change another setting as well. And it's this one here. One convex hole per UCX needs to be turned off for this only this one mesh. And that's because it's actually made up of four collision meshes. Two on the sides and two on the top. And that's just how collisions with holes have to work in Unreal Engine. So we need to change those two settings. Everything else can stay the same, but those two need to be changed. So we'll click on import and that'll import the door frame. And I didn't click on import all there, just import. Because now for the trim wall, we need to turn generate missing collisions back on. And also we're going to have one convex hull back on as well. So it was just for the door frame, we needed to change those settings. And then we'll click on import again. So we've now got our two meshes. So we're going to open the door first of all. We're going to put the nickel material on it. There we go. Oh, that was nice. And I'm just going to show you the collision mesh. So if we go to show and simple collision. We've got a cube that goes down here, a cube that goes down here, one across the top and one across the top. And that's four separate shapes and they had to stay that way for this to work. So we can just turn that off and save. So that's the door frame done. And then the trim wall has two materials. So let's go to highlight. So that's the main material. I don't know what that is actually. So let's go for the other one. So that's the one that's in between. Yeah, okay. So this top one is going to be the nickel material. Very, very nice. And then the gap in between is there's this one called hex and there's two of them. So there's M hex tile, which is this guy, which looks kind of, oh, hello, I've got lost. Which looks very cool and very sci-fi. There you go. Uh, and if you want to go even more sci-fi than that, there's hex tile pulse, which is the same material, but it has like a pulsing light behind them, which is the one I'm going to use because it looks sick. So let's click on save there. Uh, we can close both of those and we'll have a look at putting this uh, doorway in. So I'm going to put the door in first and you'll see that because of the way that the pivot is set, which is at the middle, it's kind of getting stuck beneath the floor, which is not what I wanted. And I'm going to show you a little trick here. So I'm going to raise it up above the floor and once I've done that, I'm just going to set my, in fact, yeah, I'll set it back to 50 for now. And then what I want to do is get this lined up with the floor. Now, because of the way this is built, it won't work, look, because we're on 50 snaps and it goes below. So what I can do instead is if you put something above the ground and then press the end key on your keyboard, it will then just go down until it hits something and get it lined up. So that's really cool. So now the door's lined up with the ground. So then I'm going to rotate this around and then put it roughly in place like this. So I don't need it to be super perfect yet. I'll fine tune it in a minute. It just needs to be close. Okay, we're gonna get a gap here, a gap here, and also a gap over the top of this door. We'll sort the top one out first, and we're gonna do it by getting another one of these. And we're just gonna make it smaller. So I'm gonna hold Alt and put my rotate tool on and create the copy of it. I'm then going to move it into place, which is there, I do believe. Oh, I've gone too far. There it is. And then I'm going to scale it down one, two, to 0.5. And I'm going to move it over here. So it doesn't matter that I leave a gap there because there's actually um, another mesh. Hang on, am I behind it? No, yeah, I'm not. So there's another mesh that's going to cover that up later. So I don't need to worry too much about that. But I do need to worry about this kind of top area. And you can see that it does line up with the height there. So that's good. And then we've got a gap here that we need to fill. I've not got a mesh yet that will do that. So that's where we're going to use that trim piece. 
which is this guy here. Here he is. Drag him out of the floor. Rotate him around this way. And then I'm going to rotate him this way. And now I'm going to cheat a little bit because I've done this before. I know a change that I need to make to this particular asset. And that's that the width of it on this axis here needs to be 1.25. So 1.25. Otherwise, everything doesn't line up properly. So I can then move this to be in line with the other stuff. And it's not going to fit perfectly yet until we put the snaps down to 10. And I've just got to move it forward here. It's got to be in line there. You see that doesn't fit, so I'll change the snapping to 10. Oh, that's five. Maybe five, actually. We'll leave it on five. That looks good. So you can see that's there now. I'm now going to create a copy of this on the other side. In fact, before I create a copy of it, I'm just going to make sure it goes down to the bottom. It does, yeah. So Alt, and we're going to put one on this side. I might have to fine tune this. Oh, hello. In a minute. But that looks... Pretty good there. Yep. And then the doorway needs to go back to about there. And I can now see that that's intersecting too much. So I'm going to move the door over just one. I'm going to have to have them intersecting a little bit and move this trim over one as well. And that looks pretty good. I just need this trim to continue up, so I'll select both of these, hold out on my keyboard. In fact, let's just change my snaps back to 50 before I do this. And then I'm just going to move these up like that. And that is good to go. So I'm just going to hit play quickly and check that everything's behaving itself. So I'm just going to make sure that I can get through the door. If I go too far, I'll fall off the end of the world. So I'm not going to do that. But my player can get through the wall there. All the other collisions are working as expected. As I said, we're going to sort this corner out in a sec. We've got another piece to bring in for that. So that's what we're going to do in the next step. So we're going to bring in the corner piece, which is a corner trim. We're going to bring some decoration in for this wall here to make this look nicer and get closer to finishing this level and finishing this chapter. So I'll see you in the next step where we're going to bring in the final couple of meshes and finish this level. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and enjoyable. If you're eager to dive deeper into game development with Unreal Engine 5, I have a fantastic recommendation for you. I highly recommend checking out the course Unreal Engine 5 The Complete Beginners Course by David Nixon on Udemy. It's a comprehensive and beginner-friendly course that covers all the essential aspects of working with Unreal Engine 5. I personally found it to be an excellent resource and I'm sure you'll benefit from it too. Check it out by following my link in the description below. Once again, thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.